So in today's lesson, we're going to do about carbon sequestration. We're going to look at this from the biological pump, the physical pump, and the way vegetation does this. And this is part of the A-level OCR uh, specification for geography. And I've highlighted the section in 1.C, which uh, we need to know about. So carbon sequestration, the definition is where uh, atmospheric CO2 is captured and stored um, in other stores, taken out of the atmosphere and put into other stores. So these other stores can be forests, soils, oceans, or the geology of Earth. I'm going to start by looking at the biological pump. This is really significant. It happens in the oceans. We've covered it slightly um, in the slow carbon cycle, but it's significant because it um, sequesters, uh, stores 50 gigatons of carbon dioxide every year. So it's a really significant uh, area for carbon sequestration. So the basic process starts with diffusion, and this is where carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is absorbed by the ocean and dissolves in the surface ocean. We then have the uh, microscopic uh, organisms in the surface of the ocean known as phytoplankton. They use this dissolved carbon dioxide for food and to build their structures, uh, including their skeletons. So they turn the uh, dissolved carbon, carbon dioxide into organic carbon compounds, which is their bodies uh, and their structure. What happens next is these uh, phytoplankton are part of a food chain, and the carbon that's stored in their shells and structures is absorbed by other parts of the food chain who are similarly absorbed. This means that the carbon uh, in these compounds is passed down the food chain um, as at a marine compounds, um, as a marine creatures can consume the compounds. So the, the phytoplankton carbon is absorbed by the zooplankton, which is absorbed by the krill, uh, and then later by the crabs. These are all um, living creatures in the ocean, and so they will uh, respire, and therefore they will re actually release some of the carbon dioxide back into the ocean. They also will naturally die at some point. And so when they die, uh, the carbon that's locked away um, will actually start to sink to the bottom. So all those compounds sink and over many thousands of millions of years, they will actually accumulate as carbon rich um, kind of remains, which turn into kind of sediments at the bottom of the ocean. On, that, on the way down to the bottom of the ocean, a really, really key way in which carbon um, is brought down from the surface is the fact is as they sink, what happens is bacteria um, attacks uh, these uh, carbon creatures and it actually um, helps them to decompose. So it breaks them up in the same way that fungi would help a tree break up in the biosphere. And what we know about decomposition is when you're breaking something down, it releases CO2. Because this is happening as it sinks, it actually releases that CO2 into the deep ocean. So the breakdown of these creatures and the way that they're falling um, from the surface as they die is a really important um, factor in how carbon dioxide and carbon actually gets into the deep ocean. It's not as significant that actually makes it down to the sediments at the bottom. It's only 1.2%. But the way in which the carbon goes from the atmosphere and ends up um, in the deep ocean and sediments is, is a really important process that we need to know about. I'm now going to talk about the physical or solubility of pump. So as we've said before, we know that CO2 is diffused in the surface um, ocean. And what happens is on a global scale, um, the, the actual currents that, that move water around um, will actually move the carbon around with it. So our surface current here is going from the equator and it is uh, moving that water towards the poles. So what will happen though is when this surface current, which is full of CO2, gets to the coal, um, gets to the near the poles, um, that water cools down. And as that water cools down, it becomes more dense. And when anything is dense, if we look at air as an example, anything that is dense will therefore sink. And so when the this surface current gets to um, this area here, it will um, cool down significantly and therefore sink down. And I'll show you another shot of that in a second. This is what we call downwelling, and it only happens in a couple of places on Earth, but the North Atlantic between Greenland and Iceland um, is a, a place where this will happen. 
This is another view of the downwelling, and we can see here that that surface current full of CO2 has um, gone down into the deep ocean. Because cold water, um, cold water is one of these things that can actually absorb a lot of CO2, um, um, and therefore what we actually get is lots of that CO2 that was in the surface ocean in that co now cold water being transported from the surface ocean to the deep ocean. And because there's not a lot of movement in the deep ocean, we can sometimes have uh, molecules of carbon that are actually trapped there for, for centuries. The carbon doesn't just stay there forever and ever and ever, though, because while I've highlighted that area where we've got downwelling, there is points on Earth that the, the water doesn't just stay in that one location. It moves around um, on this kind of circulation. And there is areas where those deep ocean currents eventually will rise to the surface. And these are um, per periods that are called places that are called upwelling. So I've circled a couple of them here. And that is where the, the deep oceans, um, water from above it gets moved out of the way by uh, surface winds. And that allows that deep ocean uh, water to kind of come to the surface. And all of that CO2 that's been trapped in the deep ocean is eventually diffused back into the atmosphere. Normally this happens in warmer areas, so near the equator, and where uh, the water is warm, it can't actually hold as much CO2. A bit like a can of Coke on a warm day, it can't hold the gas. And so when the water gets warmer, that rapid diffusion of CO2 back to the ocean. So if we have warmer waters, what we'll get of is less downwelling and potentially more CO2 actually diffusing back into the atmosphere. Last thing to talk about is how vegetation um, sequesters carbon. So we know the basic idea that trees use uh, photosynthesis to absorb carbon from the atmosphere and then they will store it, as you can see here, in the leaves, but also in the stems and also in the, the trunk and the roots of the tree. So that carbon is where they've converted it from a gas into an organic compound and it gets stored in those areas. So it can be stored in lots of various areas of the tree. Also, it's a living thing, so it respires. So some of that carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. And also, like the marine organisms, partly it will die. And so we can see the leaves that are here dying. And that means they will decompose when bacteria and fungi work on them. And therefore, we will have uh, lots of carbon dioxide put back into the atmosphere and some of that carbon those um, molecules will be broken down and that will make its way into the soil and be stored in the soil one one obvious thing to mention here is if we plant more trees we actually will absorb more carbon from the atmosphere and if we cut more cut down more trees we deforest more trees then more of the carbon will stay uh, in the atmosphere